All right. Well, let's hope this all works. This is going to be a recording for the first 25 problems on that first assignment that I posted. And uh, this is the kind of thing that you'll be doing next week when we meet face to face with and um, I won't be talking so much. Uh, I'll give you a chance to, to work and meet each other, uh, little groups of two on the board. We might even shift around a little bit during the period. I don't know, it's a little new situation, but for those of you who have had me before, you know I like workshops. I like students helping students and um, having conversations as I walk around the room. Uh, we have a big enough room to do it. Um, the first worksheet I gave you is a bunch of review. I usually jump right into trig, but given the circumstances uh, this year, uh, I'm changing up a little bit. Uh, might get into trig middle of next week, maybe sooner, maybe later. Depends upon what I see at the board. Uh, of course, will take its own direction. Um, as I said, most of these questions are things supposedly you know how to do from your previous class. I've been around the block long enough to know that that's not going to be the case, right? Because lots of times you learn things for a test, which means you really haven't learned it. Uh, these problems will be with you the rest of the rest of the year, and they may take you a long time today, and they may be done in 25 minutes or less later in the year. It's one of our goals, be able to look at something and go, that's easy, okay? Hopefully, uh, you know, you get to the end of a semester, you give a final exam, you don't even have to study for it. Well, that, that's the goal, okay? But to get there is gonna take some work. So the videos that I'm gonna produce, I will be talking and layering uh, some commentary as we go along. Hopefully not so much that uh, the video's not too long. You can try the problems on your own from the worksheet that I sent you. You can pause the video each time I say, okay, here's the question, you try it yourself, or you can just follow this. I don't care, it's just lots of times I don't give much homework in a term. Um, it's gonna be a little different here because I'm gonna make videos worked real well in the remote learning at the end of the spring where I hand out a worksheet and I did all the problems and per students who really studied that process and uh, did quite well in the final exam. So uh, we'll see how it plays out, uh, but don't panic if you don't know how to do these. I've had students come into pre-cal that really had a background in pre-algebra and did very well. All right, so that didn't mean they couldn't think mathematically or learn how to, just, um, you know, the sequential might not have been their cup of tea. And the holistic might have scared them to death the first couple of weeks, but then uh, once they realized that, no oh, way, I can do some of this stuff, uh, jump right in. All right, so I've written the problems down on a sheet of paper because I am having some problems with my computer, logging on to NMH Academics and printing right now. It's not happening for me. I'm gonna work with Memzel Lincoln over the weekend and hopefully iron out those bucks. All right, so here's a go at it. First question was write the equation of line through the points negative three, five, and 10, three, that's on your sheet. All right, so this is really a conversion process. And there's two things that take place in conversion, subtraction and division. So if you want to get rid of the first value, if you want to convert it, you know, subtract it out of the problem. If you subtract it out of the problem, we got x plus three. Minus three plus three is zero. I can add anything I want right now. Why don't I add five? It now works for this. Okay, and linear is the easiest conversion. Uh, it's just converting the change. Here's where the change occurs when I put in my next x. And 10 plus three is 13. 13 plus five does not equal three. So we gotta get rid of that number. The number doesn't work. So we've created the number one. We can multiply this time something to get to three. Looks like negative two. Okay. Now, uh, I could make a careless error here at some point because I'm talking to you and I'm trying to think about layering uh, a little commentary. Okay. So get used to it. Uh, I make careless errors all the time. Uh, just correct me. Somebody can unmute their camera during class and say, hey, Mr. V, I blew that one. All right. Moving along. Next question. So that's gonna be fairly simple, hopefully. All right, so we're gonna to convert to slope intercept form on the next one, I think. I hope my notes are correct here. So minus three, and if it's not the question that I asked, well, you gotta learn how to do this anyway. Yeah, I believe in shortcuts. And I believe that uh, fractions are something that you wanna get better and better and better at so they don't slow you down. So we multiply 
minus 3x, this could be written as, maybe written as, so y may be written as minus 3 fifths x, minus 3 times minus 2 is positive 6, and then you're dividing by 5, and we're adding 4. I won't take the total shortcut right now, minus 3 fifths x. I'll write this one out with a little extra symbol. 5 times 4 is 20, over 5 is another way of expressing the number 4. And now we can see y equals minus 3 fifths x plus what? 26 fifths. The beauty of an eraser is if I wanted to do this slightly differently, then I know I'm dividing by 5. And I've got two things, 6 and 20. There's actually one less symbol, uh, one less stroke of the pen by doing it that way. Okay, same answer. Okay, so there's problem number two. Problem number three. And the purpose of that was simply to learn how to uh, work with fractions more quickly. So if we do it every day, at some point, if you're having any trouble with that work, I don't have any trouble. All right, so this is point slope form. Yeah, I should give myself a little more room. So I'm going to write 3 fifths x plus 4. So that's the textbook uh, form, uh, point slope form. I think it's still point slope slope form if you write the 7 over here then you got a kind of an x to y configuration that's a little easier to see okay but this is what you're liable to see more often in a textbook so what do we have the easiest number to multiply 3 fifths by is 0 so that's why we pick a negative 4 and so now we have y minus 7 equals 0 obviously the y value that correlates with that is a 7 Okay, so you're supposed to be able to see the point from this graphing form. Now, we've done that. We've done that. It's all about this. And what is three-fifths? Three-fifths is rise over run. Terrible names. Terrible names for what's going on here. It's change in y over change in x. Okay. The denominator is the change in x. Well, why don't I change my x's by five? One, six, eleven. Could I do this quickly? Ad infinitum? Absolutely. So that's the change in x. Oh, that's the change in y. 10, 13, what? 16, 19. Let's see if 16, 19 works in here. 16 plus 4. 20. 20 divided by 5. 4. 4 times 3, 12. 12 plus 7, 19. By God, it works. We knew it would even without checking it. All right, so from so much for that. Now, where'd my eraser go? Right down here. All right, so moving right along. Let's erase that. You can replay the video, obviously, right? That's going to take you a day or two, three or four, whatever. I grade you at midterm. Remember that. Okay, next problem. 4a squared minus 9b squared. We may write that as a product. 4a squared minus 9b squared. We can write that as a product. Okay, that's what factoring means, right? To take a subtraction or addition statement and write it as a multiplication statement. Factor, fancy word for rewrite it as a product. Now, where does this come from? The Greeks, I think. I think they get the credit. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. The letter X in Arabic means something. Well, that's when that was given to us before the Greeks ever did any work with this. If anybody's Greek in the class, we like you. Okay. 25 minus 4. That's got a name, by the way. It's got a name. It's called the square root. There's the square root over here. Okay. Turns out 25 minus 4 is 21. Hey, 21 can be written as 7 times 3, for instance. Geez, seven by plus two. Oh, so 25 minus four, 21, could have been written as five plus two, five minus two. Hmm. Anyway, there are some nice drawings. If you want to go to Google and look at the geometric representation of completing the square, not completing the square, of the difference of two squares. Yeah, if you want to be curious and look at it in a little more depth, we might later. But 
How do you do the difference of two squares? The difference of two squares, a little more room here. The square roots. So what's the square root of 4a squared? 2a. What's the square root of 9b squared? 3b. So what do we do with 2a and 3b? 2a plus 3b, 2a minus 3b gets us this product, which then becomes an area statement. All algebra is based on, it's almost all based on rectangles. Uh, squares are rectangle, special one. All right, so that was that problem. Moving right along. And now for something completely different. A little, not a little shout out to Monty Python. Minus five X plus nine uh, equals minus eight X plus one. All right. One thing I'd like you to know, and you may not have known this from your Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 classes, but every equation we solve this semester, hope I'm making a correct statement here. I think I am. Correct me and during, say, Mr. V, that's, that's not a situation you just talked about. But every equation that we're looking at is basically the intersection of two graphs. And we're looking for the x value. So let's get an approximate answer before we actually solve this. These are polynomials, by the way. Polynomials should be read from left to right. I'm sorry, from right to left, from local behavior to end behavior. So what do we got? We got a nine. What are we doing? We're going down five to one, maybe something like that. Over here, what do we got? 20, which is way up here. We're going down at eight to one, sharper. Uh, where do you think these X's are gonna intersect? Cause I'm really not sure of the Y value. It's pretty, pretty approximated graph here. I think I got a small positive value. I think for instance, it's somewhere in here, small positive value. And if I plug that value back in, I can find the Y. But right now I think it's small, but it's positive. Let's find out. And if it's not small and positive when I do this, then I gotta go back and redo one of them. I did something wrong. Uh, I think I'm gonna bring the eight this way. I'm gonna add eight X, which makes this three X. And I think I'll subtract nine over here, and that's uh, 20 minus 9 is 11. So x is equal to 11 over 3. Hmm, that's positive. It's not very big, 3 and 2 thirds. Okay, so I'll go along with that. I think I'm right. All right, what do we got next? We got, oh, another intersection of two graphs. I wish I had had a positive slope and a negative slope so that I could have given a better approximation. Oh, I should be able to get one here. Uh, equals may be written as, I don't think that makes sense in this context, but that's okay. So we're looking for the X that makes truth, justice in the American way, if there is any such thing anymore. Uh, so let's get the graph. Two units. So that's now two units. I'm measuring that to be two units. So I'm going to go down four and over three. I think I'm about here. There's line one. Line two. Starts at negative one. Well, if that's what did I say, two units. So that's about negative one over two and up three. I think I got another small x value. Okay, and I think it's even closer to zero this time. Hmm. How exciting. Well, I would hope that everyone has learned how to get rid of fractions real quick. Let's multiply by six. Okay, and I'll break this down for you in our worksheets. That's where you get a chance to take your time. When we do a worksheet, we can. We get our answers and we put them up on the board like that. And when everybody's answers don't jive, we got to find out who's right and who's wrong. But right now, I'm your partner. And I'm just going to go through it just to get us up and running again because we're coming off a long layoff. All right. So 3 goes into 6 twice. So this is minus 8x. 6 times 2 is 12. 2 goes into 6, 3. So we got 9x. 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. I'm going to bring the 8 that way this time. I always like to divide. I always like to divide by a positive x. I'm going to bring the 6 this way, 18. Oh, I like that answer. Yeah, that definitely is small and closer to 0. Something a little bit bigger than 1. Looking good to me. Next. Woo-wee. 3x squared minus 17x equals 0. 3x squared minus 17x equals 0. The intersection of two graphs. What are the two graphs? A cup-shaped parabola and the x-axis. The x-axis is y equals zero. All the y values up here are positive. Down there, they're negative. So I'm looking for the roots. 
Okay, what's the easiest way to do this problem? I call this a type B quadratic. Ah, you factor the heck out of this thing. You write it as a product. What's common? That's the first rule. X, 3X minus 17 equals zero. So one of our answers is zero, and one of our answers is 17 over three. Okay. Um, yeah, I might as well hit this with a little layer of understanding. So 3x squared minus 17x plus 0 equals 0. Okay, so if I graph this starting from local behavior, which is 0, and I'm going down at 17 to 1. It's pretty sharp going down there, all right? But coming back up, so it doesn't look like one of the answers is 0 gets you 0, and 17 over 3, I think we said, didn't we? 17 over 3, yeah, 17 over 3 gets you the other 0, something a little bit bigger than 6. Oh, smaller than 6, excuse me. Okay, that's the graphical. Hope I'm not going to run out of this marker starting to die a little bit. Might have to go dig up another one. Okay, let's shake it out. Here we go, let's shake it out. That's the problem. Uh, oh, I did one out of order, I guess, no? Yeah, I did one out of order. So our, our very friendly... 2x minus 3y, oh, I got to get another marker. All right. Hey, man, I'll be back one second. Won't take me too long. Let's see. It's over here. I'm coming. So is Christmas. All right. One of these markers is going to work. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully, you can see green. Uh, I don't know how these things are going to show up, but I'm going to try green. All right, and I am going to find my questions that I put down somewhere. Where did I put them down? Ah, there they are. I'm with you. I'm cooking with gas. We don't want to cook with gas anymore. We want solar. All right, here we go. 2x minus 3y equals 17. Two, oh, this is going to be all right. 2x minus 3y equals 17. That standard form, I'm going to sketch it right now. X intercepts and Y intercepts. So Y intercept is minus 17 over three, right about here. X intercept is 17 over two, which is a bigger number than positive. So that's line one. Okay, line two, standard form. For X minus eight Y, oh, these things are gonna be going in the same direction. That's too bad. X intercept, negative one fourth. Uh, y intercept, uh, Positive one eighth. Oh, geez, these things are up to see. These things might even be somewhat parallel. I'm not sure. All right, without getting some graph paper and looking at the slopes a little bit more, I think this one is climbing slower than this one. I don't want to dive into that right now because I might run out of time when I have to upload this thing. All right, so um, we're at, looking at a pretty big x intercept, I believe. So let's multiply this one by two. Uh, where is my Eraser. This is going to drive me nuts. There we go. There we go. All right. So we're going to get rid of this, anticipating, and it <laughs> could have been down here, or up here. Anyway, we'll find out. So I'm going to double that, and I'm going to put it here since I got the the, the use of an eraser. So that's 4x minus 6y equals 34. And now I'm going to add up these two. Okay. Ah, I wanted to multiply by negative two. Okay. So negative two. Negative 2 times 2x minus 4x plus 6y equals negative 34. All righty. So we got negative 2y here. I'm adding up, right? I'm just adding up the columns. That eliminates. That's why this is called the elimination method. Negative 2y equals uh, negative 35 because I'm adding. So my y value is 35 halves. Yeah, somewhere up that first quadrant. Okay, now, racer. Uh, let's see. Oh, God, I shouldn't have raced it all, but I did. So I got to put that back up now. Uh, I'm not going to see 35 halves. And now we got to solve four x's, huh? So 4x minus 8y. 4x minus 8y equals uh, negative 1. So I'm going to multiply this one by uh, positive 8, and I'm going to multiply this one by negative 3. That's going to get me 24y. That's going to get me minus 24y. So I don't have to do that. So 8 times 2x is 16x. Minus 3 times 4x is minus 12x. 
8 times 17, 80 and 56 is 136, I believe. Could have made a quick error there, I don't think so. Minus 3 times minus 1 is positive 3. So it looks like I got 4x equals 139. So my x is 139 over 4. Yeah. This kind of would be a pretty big x, right? But you actually have to solve for both in this situation. Okay? So you can't see, you didn't see that coordinate. There it is. All right? Easy to make a mistake on those. I flew through it. Hopefully I didn't. Um, but uh, the graph seems to justify that answer, so I'm going to move right along. Uh, graphing form for y equals 3x squared uh, minus 12x minus 11. In my welcoming to you, I hope you got to see that. I said that, you know, we're going to find the roots, everything. We're going to do it. Instead of whatever question I ask in this worksheet, I'm going to do everything. All right, so negative 11, zero, negative 11 is local behavior. Going down at 12 to 1. Cup shape up. All right, so I know my x is positive. So what's my x going to be? 3 and a 12. Uh, 4 cut in half is 2 because I don't have to worry about minus b over 2a doing it this way. And if I put a 2 in, I get negative 24 here. I'll cut that in half. Negative 12 minus 11 minus 33. Again, I'm going to explain where all this comes from. I got two uh, videos in my own webpage, Jim Volinger. I put out there for the kids over at Joy Bells. Quadratic tidbits one and quadratic tidbits two. We'll explain all the shortcuts I just did, but uh, I will do that another time because I'm talking a lot. All right, so what do I got now? Uh, what did I want to find the graphing form? Well, the graphing form is now set. So the graphing form is take the A term, 2, negative 3. So x minus 2 squared gets me a minimum when I put a 2 in, minus 33. If we expand this, we should get that. Okay? And if I want the roots, my zero is up here, so i got to go up 33 units. So I've got 2 plus or minus the square root of 33 divided by 3. Well, divided by 3, right? So i got 2 plus or minus the square root of 11 for roots. One thing I haven't done in that video yet is talk about if I gave you the roots, how do you get back to this? Not too hard. So if that's x, normally we move things from the left side to the right side. We'll not go back to the other direction. So that's x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. I square both sides. Uh, actually, I think I want to do 33 over 3 here. You know, I said I'm kind of new to this process of doing this. So I'm ironing out the bugs myself as we speak. So x minus 2 squared is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Squaring this gets me 33 over 3. Multiplying by 3 gets me 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. Subtracting 33 doesn't get me minus 11, so I made a mistake somewhere. That's a shame. Uh, do I want to take the time right now to figure that out? No. But I should. But I'm not going to. We'll come back to it. Okay. I said I was ironing that out. I will. Uh, so then we got to do a little evaluation. Uh, oh, perpendicular. So here's a perpendicular line. One, two. One, two. Up, two. One, two. So this conversion ratio is a two to one conversion ratio. Boom. Your x is changed by one, your y is changed by two. Perpendicular, about right there. Yeah, that looks like a perpendicular. So let's measure this over one, over, let's see, minus one half. So wait a minute, so did I draw a bad perpendicular? Because usually it's easier to see this. Okay, so over one, maybe from here. That's a very bad drawing. All right, let's do it again. All right, let's talk perpendiculars. Let's, let's actually use to there. I'm going to call that one unit to here. That's one unit. I'm going to take more time with this. There's one. There's two. Okay, so that is up to, to one. Rise over run. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. There we go. This is better. All right, so that's why I'm hurrying right now. So over two. Oh, I'm just doing the white. Over two. Takes me to there, down one. It's still a bad drawing. It should be the negative reciprocal, okay? So I should be going over two and down one, and I'm not doing a very good drawing on this board. 
equations, okay? But that's all you gotta do is find the negative reciprocal to find a perpendicular. So the original, and then I think I'll stop the video here because I'm doing a lot of talking. It's taking me a lot longer to do this because of the talking. And I wanna make sure last spring when I got over a half an hour, sometimes it said you've exceeded your limit for recording time. So we're on number 10. And maybe the next 15 problems I do, I'll probably have to do three parts now. I will uh, probably just do the problems and not talk. All right. But um, let's see. Ah, so this is a constant. It really has nothing to do with rates of change. So really, the rate of change is all about a 2 to 9 rate of change. Right? Because this is ha, ha, ha. We don't care about that. So a two to nine rate of change over nine up to, maybe you can see this, perpendicular to that is over two down nine. That might've been a little better to be able to see that. All right, so we now have a function, a calculation that is perpendicular. So it's going at a minus nine to two ratio. And I wanted it through minus a, b, and if you recall what I said at the start, of this particular video, you got to get rid of minus a. So you subtract that out of the problem. And what's the subtraction of a minus a? Plus a. All right, so now when you put minus a in, you got a zero. You want a b? This is all about empowerment, right? I'm a real feminist. I'm really about empowering, especially women. You've gotten the raw deal for too long. You got the marker in your hand. You get to write what you want. There you go. All right, so that's 10 problems. Um, and I am going to end this video right now because I'm Russian. The fire trucks are red. That's why they're Russian. And that's why Russians are red. And we'll stop that right now because I'm getting silly.